Hi, Mark Donovan here. And today I'm gonna to go over the topic of adding user waypoints to a cross-country flight plan uh, that you've done in ForeFlight. And in particular, how to name or custom name those waypoints so that you can see them show up on the nav log in ForeFlight. When I work with private pilot st students, I always ask them to do a paper nav log and to draw it out on a sectional chart. But I also suggest if they have ForeFlight to back up their paperwork uh, with doing the same cross-country flight plan on ForeFlight. And so by being able to add user waypoints and custom naming them in ForeFlight, they can kind of compare apples to apples with their ForeFlight cross-country flight plan um, along with their paper uh, cross-country flight plan. And this way we make sure that the fuels and time and distance between waypoints um, and headings are, are, are all consistent. Anyways, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do all that. So stay tuned. When you're working on a cross-country flight plan for, let's say, your private pilot's license, you normally do it on a sectional chart, paper chart, and you'll do a paper nav log. However, you can also do it on a tool like ForeFlight, which I've got up here at this moment. And at the moment, I'm showing the two airports I want to fly from, too. So I'm going to fly from KLCI to KORE, or Laconia to Orange Mass. And what we want to do is we want to add some um, user waypoints along the way uh, that we can use for reference for pilotage purposes um, and for our dead reckoning. And hopefully we've already done that in a paper nav log, but we can also do it here. And we're going to go to the flight plan. And at the moment you see a KLCI to KORE, and you see the little red note there. That's for NOTAM because that runway is closed because of snow. Uh, but let's say we want to add um, some user waypoints in here and have them reflect in the nav log. So what we can do is uh, we can zoom in and then we can just determine, if we've determined through the POH where our top of climb is, and let's just say it's uh, 12 miles up, and we just tap and hold here. And you'll notice the, the course kind of rubber bands a little bit. And there's nothing you really can do about that um, per se. I have another solution I'll show you in a minute, but for the moment, we're just gonna um, accept that slight rubber banding or movement, and we'll click on more. And then we're going to say save. And up here where it says the name, it's got the lat longitude. We can replace that and we can call that TOC, for example, for top of climb. And then we hit save. And there you have it. You see top of climb showing up right there. Let's say we've determined our next uh, checkpoint to be this private airport right here. So again, we just kind of zoom in, tap and hold. And if you zoom in really tight, you're not going to get a lot of movement on that course line. Hit more, hit save, and then where the name is, we'll just call it um, PVT Airport, a PVT AP for airport. And we'll save, and there it is. So now if we go back to the flight plan, we've got KLC at orange, and we want to add those uh, waypoints in there. So we'll just tap at orange, and we'll cert before that, we will put in... Um, PVT AP and insert. And then let's say before that, we'll put in our TOC. And if we look at the flight plan, there you go. You've got an active leg from Laconia, the top of climb, and then private uh, from top of climb to the private airport, and then down to orange. And if we look at the nav log, we can see each leg, and we can see the heading to fly. Um, the amount of the distance it is, the amount of fuel burned, uh, and the time it's going to take to get there. And we can kind of compare those numbers now to what we did in our paper nav log. Now, there's one other way to add user waypoints without having to worry about accidentally moving your um, course line at all. And how you can do that is if you see here, we've got KLCI to orange mass again. Um, all we have to do is let's determine that we want to add a user waypoint, top of climb, let's say 10 nautical miles away from KLCI. Well, what we can do is here, we can just click on KLCI, insert after KLCI, and what we're going to do is, uh, we're going to say we're the heading was 227, and we're going to put a user waypoint 10 nautical miles out on the 227 course from KLCI. 10, and we're going to say insert, 
and we can take a look here, and there you go. There's the the KLC I 227 heading 10 nautical miles out. And we just kind of measure it, and we can see here. Now, if we want to change that username to something that we can recognize on our, our four-flight map here, we can just kind of mouse over it, click on it, and you can see it's listed right here, and we go Save, and again, where the name is KLCI 22710, we could call it TOC. And then save it, and you'll notice now it says that's the username for TOC, but the kind of database name for ForeFlight is the KLCI 227-10. So we go back to Flight Plan and look at Navlog, um, we will see KLCI to the KLCI 227-10, uh, which is, again, indicative of the database for four flight, and then from there to orange. So you don't see the nav log showing the TOC listed here um, in, this, in this method, but you do at least see it show up on your um, sectional chart here on four flight to help you uh, kind of compare how you're flying relative to your paper nav log, or, again, just to be aware of as you're flying along that you've reached top of climb, etc., now, if you do want to change the name to the user waypoint name that you came up with, you can just go back to the edit, and where it says KLCI, you can, um, 22710, you can say replace it with the equivalent username that you assigned, top of climb. And if we look at the flight plan, there it is now. And so now when you go to look at your nav log, you will see instead of that uh, KLCI 227-10, you'll see top of climb to orange. So KLCI to top of climb, then top of climb to orange. Anyway, so those are a couple ways to add user waypoints uh, to your ForeFlight um, nav log or map. Um, if you found this video helpful, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to this channel so you get notified on my next video.